Welcome everybody and thank you for taking a look at our video. I'm Papa at Tampa Bonsai LLC bringing you another one of our videos in our Learn to Bonsai video series. The title of this video is The Basics of Basic Bonsai Tools for the Beginner. Now if you've been doing this for years, you've got a tool collection, I'm not going to tell you anything here that you don't know. But if you're getting into the hobby, you're new to it, you've gotten a tree recently, or you had a tree for a little while and you don't really have a set of tools put together, that's who needs to be watching this. Uh, I'm going to try to answer some questions for you, try to give you some uh, information on the different tools that you should add to your um, toolbox or tool bag or tool pouch or tool roll uh, and the order that they maybe should be added to. But the bottom line is if you watch the video you're going to at least know what the different tools do and then you can make your best decision as to what you need uh, for your toolbox. Um, so to get started let me talk first about tool quality. There's a lot of tool quality questions in there um, but the real quick um, gloss over answer to how is the quality level of bonsai tools designated. Typically you're going to find that Chinese tools are lower quality than Japanese tools and certainly much less expensive. The quality of Chinese tools has increased considerably over the last few years so you know it's not a problem using the Chinese tools. Uh, in fact, actually, as a beginner, you most likely are going to start with Chinese tools. Uh, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. No need to ever own Japanese tools if you take good care of your Chinese tools. Um, the next division is carbon steel, which is usually the black tools, versus stainless steel, which is the silver tools. Now on the Chinese and the Japanese, they both make carbon steel, which is traditional, has gone back for many, many, many years, and they both make stainless steel. Now on Chinese, carbon steel is usually lower quality or typically lower quality than the stainless steel. But on the Japanese tools, that's not always the case. In fact, the top tools in the world are traditionally made Japanese carbon steel tools but a tool such as this which is a uh, 8 inch uh, concave branch cutter may cost you three or four hundred dollars so be aware that uh, there's a price to be paid for the highest of quality but if you take good care of your tools there's no reason why even the less expensive ones shouldn't last a long time now speaking less expensive you cannot buy a tool set for twenty dollars with six or eight tools in it and expect to get anything of any quality. You need to figure you're going to pay at least $20, $25 each for the specialty tools and scissors under $20. Um, so that being said, let's start going through the different tools and um, what they are and what they're for. Uh, the first tool that you should add, at least for me, glasses will not work on a tree without them. Uh, I can't do the video without them because I look so nice when, I mean, it kind of takes away from my beautiful look. So we're going to put these away for right now because I don't want to disappoint you guys out there. But I, that's the first thing that's in my toolbox. Next thing you want to add is a good pair of bonsai scissors. Now you can use your regular household scissors, but bonsai scissors are made specially with a, the, uh, pivot point or fulcrum point leaves for short uh, tips on them, which gives you a very precise uh, ability to get into a, uh, a branch and, and nip off what you need, you know, very easily. Um, and when you're going into a tree, having scissors that have the pivot way down here is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this is a stainless stair steel pair. I don't know, I won't say these are yeah, about $14. Um, carbon steel, my preference, probably a dollar or two more. Um, same basic thing. But as you notice, the design pretty much exactly the same. This is just an economy set of bonsai scissors. Now, if you look into the world of bonsai, you're going to see a million different types of scissors. Uh, another version here, this is actually a Japanese set. Um, 
They have the short butterfly scissors with the loops down here. There's a dozen different styles, but as a beginner, pick up something like this. This is gonna do you great. Uh, it'll cut most of your smaller branches, you know, which is really what most of what you're gonna deal with. Uh, and obviously is very, very efficient at what it does. Now, after your scissors, which for a beginner bonsai artist that has a, you know, 12 inch tree, 18 inch tree, 75% of what you're gonna do, scissors are gonna take care of. But when they won't, probably the first specialty tool you need to add to your um, repertoire is a set of concave branch cutters. And I don't know if you can see them, but as you can see, they've very, kind of look like a uh, horse tools. A lot of these tools kind of look like tools are made for working on horse hooves and stuff, but uh, bottom line is, these are bonsai tools. But this is a concave branch cutter, and what its purpose is, well, first let me say, you can certainly use a pair of shears from Craftsman, or any brand, this just happens to be a Craftsman pair. You can pair a pair of shears, these are actually pruners. Uh, but what you're gonna find is they're gonna crush your branches. They're not gonna cut clean. These are made for pruning houseplants. These are precision instruments. They have finely sharpened edges on them and their ability to cut is just absolutely incredible. Now see, I didn't have my glasses on. I completely missed the branch there. Uh, good thing I didn't chop my finger off or cut a very important branch off, but piece of trash, doesn't make a difference. But the big thing on these concave branch cutters, and it's gonna be kind of tough to see, in fact, let me grab a little bigger uh, uh, test branch. But if you'll notice on this, uh, I think it's a little dead Bougainvillea branch here, um, this side branch coming right off here. If I wanted to remove that, I mean, I could cut it right here, and this will start dying off with time, and or actually new, new leaves and stuff will sprout from that on a bougainvillea um, but it's not correct we want to when we cut a branch off we want to cut a branch off now what a concave branch cutter does is if you bring it up to the branch perpendicular to the branch itself and make a cut I don't know if you can see here but there's kind of a depression uh, where it made the cut it's not drastic but it is a depression and what it is it's lower than the surface around it so as the tree starts to heal the heel hopefully is being level with what the individual tree was as opposed to uh, I'm sure we've all seen uh, big trees where someone has cut a piece off a branch off and then the end of that branch is healed over but you still got a nub of a few inches or a foot or so sticking off the tree. We don't typically want that unless we're going to create dead wood or something. Not talking about that in this uh, video. So first specialty tool I would add is a set of concave branch cutters. Now this is an eight inch size set. Uh, this isn't a branch cutter, but this is the 11 inch, an 11 inch tool. These are the three main sizes of the tool. Eight inches standard, 11 inches the large. And then somewhere over here, I've got a, a seven inch. So as you can see, you've got your three main sizes. Now there certainly are other potential sizes out there, but that's your three main groupings of tool sizes. Now, after the concave branch cutter, and this is for cutting branches and wood, nothing else. Although I have used it for trimming my fingernails from time to time, but that's another story. But after you've added the concave branch cutter and you're ready to add another tool, and this is a, um, well, this is actually a Japanese pair, so this is probably about $80, but a carbon steel pair of this is probably ah, $22, $24, somewhere in that area. Next one I would add, is what's called the knob cutter. And as you can see from the knob cutter, it's much more, go back to the horses, it's got the shape of a horse mouth on it, as opposed to the branch cutter, which has a very straight edge, 
but is rounded from that direction like this is. So what the knob cutter will do is a little further than what the branch cutter does. With the knob cutter, when you go in to a branch and cut it off, now you should be able to hopefully see a very distinct impression in that branch. Uh, that's a, a divot uh, that's concave from all directions as opposed to just being concaved along one axis, which is what will happen with this. So this wound will heal uh, much, much smoother, uh, much more invisibly with time than a wound that would have been cut with a pair of scissors, a pair of pruners, or pretty much anything else. Uh, now, you don't want to exceed the capacity of your tools. If you're dealing with a branch that's two inches thick, this is not going to do it. Even the 11 inch tools aren't going to do it. So you're going to have to add yourself a nice little saw. Uh, keep in mind, Japanese saws work on the pull, not on the push like American saws do. So this is a stroke saw. It draws and cuts and doesn't push and cut. But what you would do is you'd make your cut with this and then you'd have to come back in and kind of depress that area either with some sort of uh, gouging tool such as a knob cutter or maybe even carve it out a little bit so that it'll again heal up nicely. So tools, dad, scissors first, concave branch cutters second, discretionary knob cutters maybe third, saw has to go into the mix at some point in the first half dozen tools you get. Uh, decent saw, cheap saw, $10 or so, $9, and they certainly make them, sky's the limit. Uh, bonsai tools are, are one of those things that you will see uh, like musical instruments. You'll see the absolute cheapest uh, level stuff right on up to incredibly expensive products out there. Um, again, let your budget dictate. You certainly do get what you pay for, uh, but a decent pair of Chinese tools will do you very, very well. I mean, don't let me get you wrong. Uh, you're just going to have to take care of them, which means wipe them off after you've used them. Every once in a while, boil them up a little bit, and they're good to go. Now, the next tool, or next two tools that you may think to add, are your wiring tools. You've got your wire cutters. You notice they're much different than a pair of electrical wire cutters. The nose, the bill on them is, is rather flat so that you don't dig into the tree. And your wire pliers. Uh, you also have your gin pliers. Same tool. Uh, gin pliers are for helping create dead wood. We'll talk about that down the road. Right now, let's call these wire pliers. So. This is for helping you manipulate and bend your wire, although when you're wiring a tree, you should certainly be wiring it by hand. You do not want to hog it down tight with a tool. Uh, but this is what you need to help bend the little end or, or whatever the case may be. But this is what you manipulate your wire with. Uh, when you try to remove wire, you should use wire cutters. And you should go down each every individual wrap of the wire and cut it. Do not try to unwrap wire by hand. That'll create problems. And again, we'll talk about that as we get into the actual uh, Learn to Bonsai introduction. But as for tools, that is another tool that you definitely want to add to the um, uh, tool bag fairly, uh, well, I don't want to say fairly quickly, but uh, it's one of the first five or six tools you're going to find you're going to need. Um, there's many, many, many other tools that are, are used. Um, tweezers, which I actually don't have a pair right here. I thought I did. Uh, oh, there we go. Another tool that you might want to add pretty quickly is a decent pair of tweezers for weeding. It's a great product. Um, but there's many other tools out there. But those six or seven tools are by far uh, the most common and probably the most important and most used tools that you'll find in your bag. Now, there are plenty of other tools out there for potting and repotting, uh, working the roots, 
uh, bending, uh, manipulating branches, uh, ground extraction, doing general maintenance on the trees out in the nursery, uh, tools for all those. And then there's the carving side of things. That can develop almost as many tools as everything else we've talked about from uh, uh, grind, you know, electrical Dremble styles tools to Makita you know, grinders, all the engraving tools that go with that. Uh, then there's the hand carving tools. There's a lot of, in the carving world too, there's a lot of homemade stuff. Uh, but again, that's gonna come down the road. So you've learned the basics. Uh, of the tools that are probably the most important. Uh, I'm advising you that uh, you should certainly keep them clean, regardless if they're stainless steel or not. Uh, even the stainless, even though it doesn't rust, I would certainly keep it clean. Um, but carbon steel is probably more likely what you'll end up with. Carbon steel holds a great edge. Nothing to be concerned with. Now, when you're buying uh, and we'll bring this video to an end, but just a real quick uh, addition. When you're buying your cutters, your branch cutters, your knob cutters, you want to close them and feel across the ends. Have these blades been machined or polished so that they actually fit together? Uh, are they connecting to each other? Because they need to, to cut clean. You do not want a crushing or, or grinding cut like something like this would do. You want a precision style cut. So check that tool before you buy it. Uh, make sure it's uh, made properly and then keep it wiped down, keep it oiled and enjoy it. It'll do a great job for you and should last many, many, many years. As always, I'm always reachable through the website, through the YouTube channel, or at Tampa Bonsai. Uh, any questions, get with me. Happy to go over this with you. But there's no reason you can't put together a very, very nicely set up uh, of decent tools in a tool bag. $100, $150. And that'll give you a nice selection. You know, we're not talking about one tool. We're talking six or seven or eight of the main tools you're going to need. But that's being said, get yourself a tree, get yourself a scissors, and enjoy. And when you find you need something else, we'll help you along with what you need to do the next part of your project. Thanks for watching the video. Keep an eye out for more of our Learn to Bonsai series. If you get a chance, subscribe to the channel and you'll be sent a notification as new videos are dropped. You guys have a great day. Make sure to go water your trees. Thank you.